you, thank you, thank you. Good evening, and thank you for joining the McIntosh County Shouters to help celebrate the Juneteenth 2022 celebration. Juneteenth is the celebration of when the last enslaved people down in Texas were given the news that they were free on June 19, 1865. Although the Emancipation Proclamation was issued in 1863, it took over two and a half years for the news to reach enslaved people and further parts of the South. The McIntosh County Shouters are pleased to present this special program courtesy of our legislature, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and the Georgia Humanities Council. Yes. We are so glad that you came out today. The McIntosh County Shouters are going to perform a few songs that will hopefully bring pleasure and enlighten you about the ring shot. So again, I say to you, good evening and welcome to this Juneteenth 2022 celebration. Thank you. And I now present Mrs. Vanessa Carter with the McIntosh County Shouters, and she will be your narrator for this evening. My name is Cassandra Noble, and I will be your mistress of ceremony. Thank you again. Good evening. Good evening. Before we begin our performance, we'd like to take a few moments of silence to pay homage to the fellow shouters who have gone on before us and have passed on. Our MC has already enlightened you on June 19th or Juneteenth, the day that enables us to be able to come before you today as a free people. The McIntosh County Shouters sing songs that Negro slaves were singing when they arrived by, by ship in Virginia in the 1700s. Every other community in McIntosh County poked fun at the people in the Bolden community, better known as Briar Patch because we spoke in a dialect but you can't take something from a person that they were born with. The songs were given to us at birth and we will sing them for all we're worth. a few songs that will hopefully bring pleasure and enlighten you about the ring shout. The McIntosh County Shouters are proud to be the original authentic practitioners of this sacred African-American song and movement tradition, the ring shout. The tradition has been passed down, passed down to this group from our ancestors and the group has been performing for the past 42 years. In the Golden community, this tradition has never stopped. Hardly a season has passed without shouting the new year in. When the slaves were brought here from their native land in Africa, 
They were treated very, very badly. They were kept in chains and fed from troughs like hogs. They were forced to eat on their hands and knees. But there was a bond that existed among the slaves. And we believe the slave John was being punished and the others could not bear to hear him groan. This song was sung to express their empathy. John on the island and I heard him groan. Eli, Eli, At this point in the program, we're going to have um, Freddie Palmer, Deacon Palmer, to give us a prayer. Word prayer. If I hate, if I, we come now, Master, to give you thanks for all your many blessings. Master, you brought us from a mighty long way. Sometimes we were right, and sometimes we were wrong. Master, but you brought us. Yes. And we want to tell you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Master, we thank you for this opportunity that we now enjoy. We ask you, Master, just to bless everyone that is bowed on the sound of my voice. Bless the one that desired to be here and couldn't come. This bless mankind everywhere to see me. Oh, Master, I thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing right now. We ask you to continue to hold us in your powerful hand and shelter us from the storm and the rain. And oh, Master, thank you right now for all your many blessings. Mm -hmm. We ask you now just to bless mankind everywhere to see. Bless that mother and bless that father too. Hold them in your hand. And Master B will give you all the honor and all the praise. Why? Because thou art worthy of all our praise. And we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. For all that you've done for us. And oh, Master Wynn, praying these is over down here. We ask you to give us a home somewhere in your kingdom. Where our souls would be at rest and our weary souls would be at rest. And in Jesus' name, I ask it all. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Can you imagine thinking that your mother, father, grandparents, all of your relatives before you died in the field? There was absolutely no hope for a better life. If it was not plowing, 
It was hoeing or harvesting, as long as it was in the fields. They had no other hope. They only assumed everyone was going to die in the fields. In the field, we must die. <coughs> In the field, we, we must, oh Lord, we must die, we must die. The Shouters began performing professionally in 1980. They have traveled widely to schools, festivals, churches, and public and private events, educating and entertaining audiences around the United States about the Rain Shout tradition and their unique Gullah Geechee heritage. The group was awarded the National Heritage Fellowship in 1993 and were selected as producers of distinction and founding members of the Georgia Made, Georgia Grown program in 2009. Some of our performances include the National Black Arts Festival and the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. In 2008, the Shouters were the opening act at the first National Heritage Masters at Carnegie Hall. Yes. The group has been featured in magazines and documentaries, including HBO's Unchained Memories. The Shouters are also proud recipients of the Governor's Award. They performed at the Library of Congress and the Kennedy Center in December of 2010. In, Dece in December of 2014, the group performed at the Lucas Theater in Savannah, Georgia for a week as part of the Musical Explorers, which was developed in partnership with Carnegie Hall's Wild Music Institute, entertaining and educating approximately 10,000 school children in the Savannah area. The Shouters are featured in the Georgia State Travel Guide, which was, re was released in January of 2016 at Tourism, Hospitality, and Arts Day at the Capitol. The Shouters have a new album that was released in February of 2017 with the help of the Smithsonian Institute, Washington, D.C. In September of 2016, we were invited to Washington, D.C. to participate in the grand opening of the National Museum of African American History and Culture one of the biggest events ever, not only here in the United States, but in the world. That's right. In December of 2017, we performed once again for a week in collaboration with Carnegie Hall for over 15,000 children at the Lucas Theater in Savannah, Georgia. In April of this year was our most recent performance with them. In June of 2019, the Shouters traveled to Boulder, Colorado to perform at the University of Colorado. And we had a great time. We were so well received at the university that the local radio station, E-Town, 
had us to come directly to their studio to record a live performance for Aaron. In October of 2019, the Shouters were featured centerfold in the Paisley Magazine. We also traveled to Arkansas to film a movie, Freedom's Path, which was to be released in the spring of 2020. But we all know that 2020 was a year like no other, so the release date was not met. But the world's movie premiere was on Cinequest in April of this year. Those are just a few of our many accomplishments. And we know that going all of these places and having all these opportunities that otherwise would have been impossible comes from the blessings of being instilled with good family values and a very strong religious background that has been passed down to us from our forefathers. Keeping this tradition alive is our tribute to them and a legacy to our children of what they've left for us. The torch has been passed to us and as long as the shouters can keep that fire burning, keep the tradition, the shout tradition alive, that's what we intend to do. That's right. Thank you. Slaves were not paid for their labor, but were given food and clothing left over from the big house. The slave master would have the female slave prepare the choice meats for his family. The slaves were given what was considered as the throwaway meats, neck bones, hog head, chicken feet, and chitlins to use in the preparation of their meals. The master had no ideas of what our grandmas did with those throwaways. They knew how to add those natural herbs and spices to make meals that were indescribable. Right. In the words of a slave, the food was so good, it would make you slap your mammy. Okay. Speaking of your mammy, many of the slaves were children, and children are the same no matter what. They all crave the attention of their parents. But can you imagine, after working in the field all day, coming home to a whining, crying baby? When Papa came home this evening, this is exactly what he found, a whining, crying baby. It could have been a fever, it could have been hunger, or it could have just been wanted to be noticed. No matter, it was a whining, crying baby. But Mama always had a solution to this problem, and this song encourages Papa to hold the baby, hold the baby. Hold a 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 baby. Notice when the shouters came in, they were carrying some objects. I see a few children in here, so some of them might not know what some of these are, but the older people probably know what they are, but I'm going to acquaint you with them anyway. There were no automatic washers or dryers, so we had to use a washboard and a wash tub to wash clothes in. And then the clothes had to be hung on a line or thrown across a fence or a bush to dry. There was no electricity, so we had to heat our iron by a fire in the fireplace or outside in the yard by the fire. We also have one of our first electric irons. Since there was no electricity, oil lamps were used for light. I believe you can get an oil lamp at Walmart today, but you probably can't find one that looks like that. We also have one of the first electric toasters. <coughs> okay. 
and shoes need to be fastened. And a shoe buckler was used to fasten shoes. Our pickings had to go into something. The pickings was usually cotton, and we used a croaker sack for the cotton. And every now and then we needed a quick fix, so we used a safety pin. And the next song that we're going to perform, we usually have um, some of the audience to come up and give us some audience participation with this. So if you got anybody out there who might like to try and yeah, shouting, I would ask you to come up on stage at this point. Nobody? None of the children? I see some kids back there. I see one brave soul maybe coming this way, maybe going to the bathroom. She's coming this way. Okay, this next song is a song that was sung by the slaves to express what was taught to them about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. This song was actually Adam and Eve in the garden pinning up leaves. The song, however, has been changed to picking up leaves because it has more rhythm and action. In the Garden of Eden, Eve and Adam saw the need to cover their nakedness. Thus, this lively song tells Eve and Adam tells how Eve and Adam took to picking up these and using them to cover themselves. Adam and Eve. Oh, Eve. And at this point in the program, I'm, I'm going to turn the mic back over to the MC, and then we'll come back. Awesome performance by the McIntosh County Shouters. Come on, give them some love. Show them some love. Yeah. Adam, wild well proud Adam, kicking up leaves in the garden. Amen. I love it. Thank you, McIntosh County Shouters and Ms. Carter, for bringing us to the point in our program thus far. 
Now at this time, I have a very special honor of presenting the guest speaker for this afternoon's event. Our guest speaker is Dr. Amar Jamal, he likes to be called just Jamal okay. Toure. I'm going to call him Jamal out of respect for what he requested about Jamal. Okay. Amar Jamal Ture, JD, the son of Claude Lee Jr., who has gone home to glory, and Evelyn M. Lee, who is a native of Savannah and Hilton Head, South Carolina. His families have been in the low country of Georgia and South Carolina since at least 1814 and established in family compounds in the late 1800s. He, Jamal, is a graduate of Savannah State University. <laughs> he has a dual degree, dual degrees. He has graduated cum laude, high honors, and the Walter F. Georgia School of Law at Mercer University. Jamal, we are so glad that you can be here this afternoon with us. And I introduce to some and present to other, Dr. Amar Jamal Toure. But the, but the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Yes. We give thanks and praises to God Almighty, Lord of all the world. Master of the Day of Judgment. Uh -huh. Thee do we worship and thy aid we seek. Mm -hmm. And we follow the way of the Most High. And um, it's an honor to be here in Magnetized County. Some of you all know me, some of you don't know me. Some of you all have seen our work, the work that we've done. We tell folks this often, that most of us do not know American history. Thank you. We know American mythology. And we spit it out, we feed other people the mythology. We do the things that will not empower people, but basically to keep them down. No, what I do, the work that I do traveling around the entire world, we empower people to not understand who they are and give a balance with regards to the story. Amen. So yes, and just like earlier today, uh, or actually yesterday, I'll let you know this. This is my ninth Juneteenth program that I've done. <laughs> From Friday to now. This is the very last one, but this is the one that I was looking forward to. And so again, now again, we do this to empower the people. And what I share with folks is that often what happens, we have people who give us information that is not uplifting us. And that's what we got to do, we got to uplift us. And why, when I was contacted about coming here, uh, some of you will not know this. Some 20 years ago, I was in Darien, Georgia. And, oh, I should say, excuse me, some of y'all know Jamal, but a lot of you know, oh, excuse me, some of you also know the African spirit of D. Yeah. King. <laughs> you know that's right, when we travel around. And so, yes, what happened over 20 years ago, I'm in Darien, Georgia, the African spirit, in Darien, Georgia, for a program. And guess what? They called the police on the African spirit. <laughs> So when Carlita, I was like, I said, y'all want Jamal of the spirit. She was like, Jamal, you found the village. She said, bring the spirit. I'm like, we're going to do a Hilton Head spirit. But actually, yes, yeah, some people realized, found out that, I'm like, wait a minute, they called the police because they saw this entity with this blue face paint on and these colors and saw this outfit and they were a little leery of that. But now when people see it, they're going to say, that's Gullah Kitchen culture right there. That's African culture right there. People are going to say, that is Africa in Georgia. Yeah. That is Africa in the coastal area. And why is it also important for me to be here when I say, Gullah Geechee, been know about freedom. When they ask me, what should the program be about? Been know about freedom. That's because right. I need to ask this question, because they're actually being to talk right now. I ask this question, are you all familiar with the Underground Railroad? Yes. yes. Okay, people who know me know that I ask this question also. So those who know me, you don't respond. I want the ones who don't know to respond. What was the first direction of the Underground Railroad? Why you guys still my thunder like that? No. Why you guys show off like that? No. You don't really, I'm trying to show you how brilliant I am, but you guys still my thunder. Yes, it went south. You empowered him. 
The first Underground Railroad did not go north, it went south. It went south to a place called Gracia Real, Santa Teresa de Mose, better known as Fort Mose or Fort Mose, which is right outside St. Augustine, Florida. <laughs> but I tell my people that there are three Underground Railroads. Oh, remember I told y'all, we're going to give you some information that's not the mythology, but the history that's even more illuminating, that there are three Underground Railroads. And the second Underground Railroad, that's the one that's the most popular. And for me, the second Underground Railroad is tied to my family, a part of my family history that's on Hilton Head Island. A part of my family history is tied to the second Underground Railroad out of a place called Darien, Georgia. Oh, wait a minute. Some of my ancestors came out of Darien, Georgia and were taken to Hilton Head Island. Yes, yes. So that's why, and I say that that's why it's even more personal for me to talk about that we men knew about freedom. We didn't have to wait to uh, June 1865. And I gotta say this right here. Every frog, the praise a pond. Every frog, the praise a pond. Every frog will praise his pond. Right. But what happens so often, we do not praise our ponds because we think that nothing has been achieved in our ponds. And that's why God Almighty sent us here to give you some of the history of the story. And Amen. so, as Amen. we tell folks, folks on Hilton Head, when they see Jamal, they're like, oh, they know we, he ain't got to have no face paint. No. He ain't got to have nothing on him because we know Jamal, the spirit is going to come at any point at any time. Amen. Daniel, we are in heaven. We are in heaven. And we sit down by the Hopi River. Oh, some of you, when you hear Hopi, you don't know the language of your people. That means the River Nile. Some do not realize that the River Nile flowed to heaven. And we are there sipping upon the cool water of the Nile, and we sing the praises, much like the shallows would sing right here. We sing the praises of the Lord there. And then God Almighty said to me, let's free. Let's free. Spirit, go down there, let the churn know who they for be. We say, yeah, Rob, oh Lord, and we come down the Burju Alamasi, the Tower of Diamonds. Then we step upon the Holy Land. And so many, when they hear Holy Land, they think of Iraq, Jordan, Syria, Israel. But little do they think of a place called Djibouti, Port, Somalia, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan, Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Egypt, Africa. That's right. The largest part of the Holy Land is Africa. And so we come upon the Holy Land and we smile when we see the people. But then we hear a cry. We hear a cry, not truly a cry, but we hear some going to say, Me you me you me you missing you. Missing you! Missing you! And then on the other side, we see Ye Ye Africa, Mother Africa. On the other side, we say Abu Africa, Father Africa. On the other side, they say Sogadayo! 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 I shall follow you! I shall follow you! I shall follow you! And Mother Africa and Father Africa follow the churn on the other side. The ones who have said, missing you. And we come over here. Hmm. We come over here to the Sankofa State. Hmm. Do you all know what is the Sankofa State? What state is called the Sankofa State? Oh my God. Y'all don't know that? Hmm. <laughs> Georgia. Georgia is the Sankofa State. Oh Lord, uh, what is the nickname of the state of Georgia? What is the nickname of the state of Georgia? What's the nickname? No, Peach State. Oh my God. The nickname of the state of, oh my God. A nickname for the state of Georgia is called the Buzzard State. Oh, you ain't even know that? Another name is the Empire State of the South, but that's another story for another day and time. But the buzzer state. And what is a Sankofa bird, anyone? A buzzer. A buzzer. That's why we say that Georgia is the Sankofa state. Georgia is the state that you can reclaim your story. 
Georgia is the state that's the foundation of we. And so we come over here on the Sankofa bird and we land. We land in a place called the Florida, in the holy land of Africa. See, some of you going to think about something called 1619. You know, 1619. Okay. That this is the holy land of Africa. We land in the Florida. And then we get on a battle, and battle in Gullah means bulls. But we know some of you do not know the language. Gullah is the only African language in the United States. Another story for another day, another time. We are on the battle, and we're with the Bakra, the Spanish Bakra. Ooh, some of you still don't know the language. Bakra, in Gullah means European or Caucasian. You go to Jamaica, Guyana, Belize, Barbados, Suriname, Virgin Islands, and Sierra Leone. They said Bakra. The word comes from Africa where they say Mbakara. And see how a language comes across the water that comes right to you and something you cast it away. No frog could ever praise it upon if you throw it away like that. But again, we are on the battle and the Africans are with the Spanish and we come past the place we say called Florida. Did we go? As I see them, they did travel to a place called Sabella Sound. You know the Sepulchre Sound in Georgia. And so they come to Sapelo Sound in Georgia, but we don't know exactly where they're for be. Then they pass by a place called Crescent Bluff, and a place called Liberty County, Georgia. Yes. Then they go on further on down, then they pass by the Salt Island, that some know by another name, by the Native American, and the Yuchi word, which is Tybee, yeah. in Chatham County. But then we know what happened, then they continue on up. And they land, we know for a fact, on a place called Isthmus to Osos. The island of the bears, known to some as Trench Island, but most known as Hilton Head. 1526, the Africans and the Spanish land on Hilton Head. That is some 100, maybe 100 years before 1619 in Jamestown, Virginia. And that is even before the people were set foot on Plymouth Rock. But at some point, those Africans will not give a native people and fight for their freedom somewhere along the Petey River, Carolina, or then in Georgia. So again, Africans are free here, understanding liberty, understanding freedom in the 1500s. But many ain't know the story like that. Then we go on here another. When we told you about the first Underground Railroad, we see that some African has said that it'd be a feast for someone called Mary. You ever heard of someone called Mary? Am I around a bunch of heathens? <laughs> So what happened? Some turned, they be there, and they said that some say a vision of Mary come to them at the time of the Feast of Mary. They're at a place called the Stono River in Carolina, in Charleston County, South Carolina. And right there, oh no, I need to let you know that. That some people say that Africans are brought here to the Americas because they ain't know about God. We should let you know this, that they know of Yasu and Isa. Yasu and Esau, two of the men they called Jesus in Africa before they brought over here. Amen. So yes, now oh, just to give you a little side note or something. Some gonna say the oldest Christian nation in the world is Ethiopia. But some are gonna say that Armenia is first. So if Armenia is first, then Ethiopia is second. So Ethiopia is either first or second. But again, understanding that when you talk about the great religions of Sabianism, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, they are all tied to Africa. But again, another story. So right there, that those Africans who are there in the Carolinas, some of them are Catholics. And they were Catholics in Africa and brought over here. And so that's why when the Feast of Mary time come, that's when one of them named Jimmy, Jimmy, a young soldier, a Congo soldier, they say that Mary came and told them, this is the time that you now fight for live and die, Jay. Freedom. Freedom. And so what then happened, they go and get some banners, they get some flags, and they write. Yes, they write, because Africans have schools in Africa. And so they go and write. They write on the flags, live on the Dajay, liberty. And then they begin to... Oh, see when you hear that shout rhythm, you ain't know that that's an African rhythm, the oldest African rhythm in the United States. And when you see them gals go around and do that ring shot, go around that circle, that is the oldest African performance tradition in the country. Little side note, 
McIntosh County is the hotbed for the Ring South tradition. But on the Stone Oak River, as they're now beginning to play the djembe, play the dondo, they play the drum, they had their banners, and they're waving the flag. And their plan was to free all the Africans from Charleston County, South Carolina, Carlton County, South Carolina, Buford County, South Carolina, Jasper County, South Carolina, Chatham County, Georgia, Bryan County, Georgia, Liberty County, Georgia, McIntosh County, Georgia, Glenn County, Georgia, Tampa County, Georgia, going to Nassau County and Florida, and going to Duval County, something right. Duval. Duval. They're going on to St. John's County for them to have freedom. Because what had happened in the 1600s and 1700s, King Carlos, the Spanish king, said to the Africans, you can be free here as long as you become Catholic and pick up weapons to defend the Spanish crown. Uh, we've been through freedom. That's right. And even when freedom comes, it's something called the American Revolution. I would ask you all, but not necessarily that he got a or something like that. I would ask you, who is the father of this nation right here? Who is the father? Who brings a victory for this nation to become a nation? Any of y'all know his name? The father of the United States, the father who brings victory to the United States for you not to have a nation here. I guess they all know now that the spirit like to ask trick questions. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. Some of us say George Washington, not George Washington. <laughs> His name is James Amistad Lafayette. Yes. Who is James Amistad Lafayette? A double spy during the American Revolution who is African. Like I said, he ain't for being Gullah Geechee, but we must pay homage to him. James Amistad Lafayette is a double spy. He had worked with someone at one point by the name of Benedict Arnold. Wow. And so when Arnold not make his way, he not leave, he not still going to work for the British. And so he going to give the British, give Carl Wallace, some bad information. <laughs> but to the American, to the patriot, he going to give to George Washington through his confidant named General Lafayette, give the right information so George Washington is not able to defeat Carl Wallace at Yorktown. You would not have a nation right now if it was not for James Amistad Lafayette, the father of this nation. The information is there in American history, but you don't look at it. But anyway, those Africans right there, we see some of them who are now looking, and we see some of them are going to say, Ore, ore, miri, abundantly ye. Ore, ore, miri, abundantly ye. They are ones who will be in a place called Ibo Eleto. You call it Ibo Landing. Just at the turn of the century in the 1800s, there are some Africans who say, the water spirit bring me here, the water spirit take me back. The evil's right there. Because they say, no man always so, only God always so. And they manifest that. But then also, we go and look. We look again, we see some Gola Kisi people. Oh, we say Gola Kisi, that'd be Gola Geechee. Yeah. And some do not realize that Gola means people anointed by God. That's what we say, Gola Geechee. So we see that. And so, but we look down, to something called the War 1812. We see some, mm, some do not realize that along the Atlantic Ocean in North America, that there was an African Republic at one time. It was on a place called Cumberland Island. Thank you. Camden County, Georgia. The Africans leave on a place called Camden County, Georgia, and a place that you might have heard of called Glenn County, Georgia. They would not go over there and establish a republic during the war of 1812. Yes. Again, the story is not praised, but we praise them all today. Right. And so what then happened? Those Africans now will not remain there on Cumberland Island. Some of them will leave. But then it's, oh, there are some other Africans who are also fighting on a place called McIntosh County, who are prepared to fight against the British if they invade McIntosh County. Africans, yes, right here, on Sapelo, and right here, from Yolonia, the Crescent, yeah, they're, they're all prepared to fight and defend this nation right here. Oh, but that don't come up to the term. <laughs> but then again, we, that's why God said we're here to let you to know. And so right there, those Africans who be on Cumberland Island, let you know what happened to them. They would leave from here, first they go with the British to a place called Bermuda, but then they don't remain there. Later on, they're taken to a place called Trinidad. 
And in Trinidad right now, they have something called company villages. And they, the people who live in the company villages are called Americans. They are descendants of African people from Virginia and Georgia. And some of you like the Nyam, right? Some of you all like Nyam. Hmm. Again, you all don't know the language. It's a shame before God. Nyam and God needs to eat. That's right. In N-Y-A-M. In Jamaica, they say Nyam. Yep. In Guyana, they say Nyam. And in Panama, they say Nyam go, which means eat and go away. So, in Trinidad, they down there eat Nyam rice down in Trinidad. But guess where the rice came from in Trinidad? From Georgia. The rice that's in Trinidad that they eat down there came out of Georgia. Which tell you who what those Africans did when they left Cumberland Island? They took the rice with them out of Camden County and Flint County. Again, your story. Because they understood it was no longer about captivity. It's about liberty. It's about liberty. And then we smile. We smile, then we see the time of the big shoot. Oh, oh. The big shoot in Gullah means civil war. And then we smile, we like, see the big shoot, and we see the Underground Railroad. We see Africans with some blue jackets. Now, some who might be tied to Savannah, we ain't not talking about Savannah hot blue jackets. <laughs> talking about the Union Navy. Because right along here, that you have what are called freedom colonies that are right along the coast of Georgia during the big during the Civil War. That's why Gullah Ditcher people didn't know about freedom. As soon as the war got started, bam, they knew that a place along any island along the coastal areas here represented freedom for them. And we see the people who operate the Underground Railroad. We see one, they write about his name, his name be Nat. Not Nat Turner. Another one named Harvey. Matt and Harvey are in Glen County, Georgia, and they are fighting for Africa to not have freedom on a place called St. Simon and Jekyll Island. They are fighting so they will have freedom right there. And they even write about Matt and Harvey in the papers in Savannah, saying that they are a nuisance to the efforts of the Confederates. Oh, but the China ain't know this story. Then also, hmm, DK, I was, well, let me ask you. We got any table tapping here? Any table tapping here? Okay, Y'all know table tapping me? Yeah. Not you, but I just you. <laughs> <laughs> table tapping Gullah means preacher. And I would ask a preacher in here if the flock know about Cain. That's what I would ask. I would ask them deacons if they know the flock know about Cain. Y'all know about Cain? Yes, sir. Who is Cain? Say what? Y'all know we just said that Mr. Freddie up, right? Yeah. He wrong. Cain <laughs> um. is 27 years old. Cain is 27 years old during the time of the Civil War. Time of the Civil War. Cain, they say Cain, the one of the Freedom Colonies, they say Cain came into a camp. Right here in the, oh, Cain was in McIntosh County, Georgia. So he is leaving Africans. They say he leaves all of them Liberty County, Georgia, McIntosh County, Georgia, and he takes them to a freedom camp. He brings them to a freedom camp, and they're all there on the islands right here in McIntosh County. And they are able to rest, and they're able to relax. They are not able to shout, live with the die, say, liberty, liberty. They are not happy. But then what happened? That young man named Cain said, I have to go. And they all said, Cain, you have sanctuary right here. You have freedom right here. You must say, where are you going? Cain said, I have a job to do. Two weeks later, Cain comes back with a woman and a young lady and a baby. He has some others where he said, this is my family right here. I had to bring them to freedom too. He said, I will sacrifice my freedom for my family. And this is my sister right here who just had a baby. Cain out of McIntosh County, Georgia. But people don't talk about Cain. I don't hear anybody talk about Cain who live right here. That's why I say, praise your palm.
so people understand your story and your great. Then I look and I see another nation within a nation. I see a nation that goes from Burnside Island in Chatham County, Georgia, to Bryan County, going on down to Liberty County, and then coming right here to McIntosh County, Georgia. I see Africans who not have their own school system, they have their own militia and their own government, and now begin to bring about economic power for all of them, not just for one, but for everyone. Because, oh, why was that important? Because you all have heard of something that has occurred here. You have heard of something in which they talk about someone they said that there is a meeting that is held in Savannah, Georgia during the big shoot, during the Civil War. And that Sherman will sit down with 20 black ministers in Savannah. And when he sit with down with them, what is so wonderful about this, these 20 black ministers, these 20 black table tappers, that when he sits down with them, they said to all of them, they said, only one of we will crack your teeth for me. Okay. Crack your teeth and go make to speak. Only one will speak for all of us. And so they said to Reverend Garrison Frazier from historic first Bryan Baptist Church, the oldest continuous black church in yes. North America that's located in Yamacraw, which is the first Gullah Geechee community in Georgia. Another story for another day, another time. They say that to Reverend Frazier, that he will speak on behalf of them. And Sherman then goes, he goes to Frazier, he says, what does the Civil War represent to you and your people? And Frazier says, how can you expect a man who has gotten wealthy off of us to treat us as equals? He said, it will take years to correct. He said, we must have land. We must have land so the old men will work it, the women will work it, and the children will work it. He said, the young men will send a fight in the war. And he said, we will be able to take care of ourselves and have a surplus. What did he mean by having a surplus? That we'll be able to engage in business. That now what has happened, Frazier has now said that this war is no longer about just having liberty and having freedom, but it's about independence and autonomy. And so from that, you all go and say, even, I need to let you all know this, that it's not just in black American history, but even in black history, we tell incorrect information and mythology. We talk about Sherman being the impetus for 40 acres and a mule, and not realize that it was a black man who was a minister was the impetus for it. Because Sherman is so impressed with how Frazier broke it down, that's why he not going to issue it. But it's based on Reverend Frazier being divinely guided to not share that. And so that's why for some of you right now, your families, when you said you ain't got your 40 acres, some people ask, I said, so uh, you got land in your family? Yeah. How long ago? My great great granddaddy, my great great grandma. I said, so it's 1800s, right? Yeah. yeah. That's 40 acres of this real fool. That's it. That's it. That's the right. Even though the government may have said to some of them they're going to take it back, guess what, what some of your people did? They went to the tax auction or went to some of the landowners and bought some of the land because they wanted to have independence and autonomy for their families. They didn't know about freedom. That's right. They knew that freedom was not just a political thing, it was an economic thing also. And so that's why they did that. And so in McIntosh County, see, I ain't got laws from Burnside Island. Coming on down to McIntosh County, Reverend Tunis Campbell, That's a right. state uh -huh. senator. Yeah. That's, That's why he did what he did to make sure to empower the people to not have land, yeah. to have an economic engine for them to support themselves and their families for generations, yeah. to help them into the 2022 time period. That Reverend Tunis Campbell, even with now they tell him you can no longer be on the island, he comes to a place called the mainland, Bell Isle, or Bell Island, here in Atchison County, Darien, Georgia. Now they still establish the same thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Powerful story for people. And then some be going to leave it alone, and then I go and throw about Butler Island, Butler Island. Y'all know about Butler Island, right? Uh -huh. And what is the wonderful story about Butler Island? Oh, the big thing is we protect. That ain't what I'm talking about. See? <laughs> another, another, what? Rice. Rice. That ain't talking about rice. I heard he said we've been talking about rice. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> because often what happened for me, what happened for me is this. I hear people talk about Butler Island, and I'm always, it's just like this. And I'm going to let y'all know, I love this man right here. I love this man right here. This man's always been a great supporter of mine. And now I love him. I love him. I got to see that. 
And Mr. Fred, when they say that to me about Butler Island, I'd be just like this. I'd be like a little kid, like just waiting. I'm just like waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the rest of it. I ain't waiting to hear about the rice. I ain't waiting to hear about the weeping time. I'm just waiting. Especially people out of Macintosh County. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. And I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. And I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. Oh my, oh my God. Y'all talking about Butler Island. Why don't y'all talk about Danny Stewart? Do you know who Danny Stewart is? Danny Stewart is from Butler Island. He was a politician here in McIntosh County. He's a blacksmith, a politician, corner in McIntosh County. He was a political leader here, Danny Stewart, from Butler Island in the 1800s during Reconstruction. And guess what? Not only is he a political leader here, his son becomes a political leader of Danny Stewart II. Do y'all know about Danny Stewart? Wow. The Colored, Farm, the Colored Farmers Alliance, that's composed of Danny Stewart, Joshua LeBree out of Savannah, Georgia, Burroughs Community in Chatham County, Georgia, Aaron Bradley, also Tunis Campbell. They're the reason why you have the Farmers Alliance building on Sapelo right now. Y'all didn't know that? Wow. I'm being facetious right now. That's why we come here to give you the story. So when you talk about Butler Island, do not reduce it just to the weeping time or with the gods of the other thing. Talk about Danny Stewart, who was a political leader here in McIntosh County, when every other place in the state of Georgia had no political black political power. Two places had it. Camden County, Georgia, and McIntosh County, Georgia. That's right. In the face of Jim Crowism, you had the power right here. That's why I'm here to praise your pond right now. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want no issue for Khalifa, because she already said Jamal. Now we know you like to talk. So you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wind it on. Do it heavyweight. They fool against mine. No issue. But again, it is important for us to understand. We celebrate Juneteenth, and what is so, I tell people, what, what got me was that I saw, I think it was on CNN, that they want to talk about Juneteenth. They said, Juneteenth, the world celebration of freedom. And I'm looking at that, and I'm shuddering. I am absolutely shuddering when I saw that. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, oh my God, they're saying Juneteenth, the celebration of freedom worldwide. And I'm like, oh my God. So let me ask a question, just a, just, just a simple question. What is the first federal holiday that comes out of the black experience? What is the first federal holiday that comes out of the black experience? So I say emancipation, but emancipation not necessarily federal, but I understand, because that was people celebrate. And in fact, just a little side note, the oldest emancipation celebration is not Juneteenth. It's done in Thomaston, Georgia, in Upson County, mm. and done around May 29th, mm. 1866. And in fact, something called the Central Georgia Railroad, Central Georgia Railroad, and in fact, around that time period, will actually have trains coming from this area, Savannah, Atlanta, Augusta, Macon, Columbus, Albany, to now take black folks to Upson County, Georgia, to Thomaston, Georgia, for that celebration. That is the oldest in the entire country, and here a lot of us in Georgia don't realize that. But back to what is the oldest, uh, the first federal holiday coming out of the black experience? Okay. A, lot people, a lot of people say MLK. A lot of people say Juneteenth. Uh, I'll let y'all know this. It is time to a man that um, he, he lived in the Gullah area. He's from a place, he, he lived in a place called Industrial College, Georgia. And you all know Industrial College, Georgia? I was about to say that. Why you just won't let me go and say that? Oh my God. <laughs> Savannah State at one time was a town. There were two black towns in Chatham County, Georgia. Burroughs, that when I mentioned about Joshua Legree, Burroughs is a black, all black town in Chatham County. And this other one was Industrial College, Georgia, AKA Savannah State University today. Yes. And so what happens, there is a man there. His name is Major Richard R. Wright the first president of Savannah State University. Richard R. Wright will create a black holiday, uh, inspire a holiday, federal holiday,
that is on February 1st. Y'all know what holiday that is now, right? Yeah. And what day is that? February 1st? So that was a Black History Month. It's called National Freedom Day. What is National Freedom Day? Richard R. Wright, the first president of Savannah State, who also becomes a banker, he will not inspire the federal government to create a holiday called National Freedom Day that's built on the freedom of all people in this country. So that's why last night when I looked at on television, I was like, my God, none of us know our story. And people sell the story to us, and so we wind up not facing our pawn. So I say to you here in Darion, McIntosh, Glenn, Camden, Brian, Liberty, I said, praise your palm. Be not afraid, because this is what the deal is. Waqil Jal Haq. When truth arise, falsehood must perish. Falsehood by its very nature is bound to perish. And you have an obligation. Say World War, be not. Sankofa Ayinke. Go back into your past and reclaim your story. Your story is not lost, just misplaced. Peace and blessings. <laughs>
We would like to thank Don Brown and Brenton Lamar Jordan for those soul staring praise dances. Give them another big round. They'll be taking center stage again to perform. At this time, we will have our narrator, Ms. Vanessa Ann Carter, come to the front where she will introduce each of the McIntosh County shouters and tell you just a little bit of spice about each one. Okay, we'd like to thank everybody for all their performances and their participation. Um, Brenton, who came out and uh, did some African dancing, he actually gives dance classes at the Cultural Arts Center in Savannah, Georgia. And he starts back in August giving the dance classes to open to people of all ages. And at this point in the program, I'm going to introduce the shouters to you all. Some of you know us and some don't know us, so I'm going to introduce everyone in the group to you. Shouters, where have you been? There are 10 persons in the group, ranging in age from 27 to 80. The shouters are all related by birth and I will explain to you how we're related as we go along. The patriarch of the group was Lawrence McIver. He was the group's lead singer or songster. He was the one who would start or set a song before the shouters joined in. Mr. McIver is now shouting in heaven. Freddie Palmer, who was also a strong baser and clapper, now sets most of the songs and is the lead singer or songster. Accompanying him is the stick man, Brenton Jordan. He beats on a large wooden square with a thick stick to control the rhythmic pace. <laughs> LC Scott is a baser and clapper, and he is responsible for responding to the call of the songster and maintaining the rhythm with his clapping. Dennis Wiley is another one of our bassers and clappers. And the remaining members of the group are the shouters. But before I go on to the remaining members, Freddie Palmer, Brenton Jordan, Elsie Scott, and Dennis Wiley are all cousins. The first one of our shouters, Mrs. Carla Jordan, is Brenton's mother. And then we have Mrs. Carolyn Palmer, and she is Freddie's sister. We have Miss Carol Palmer, and she is Freddie's daughter. And then we have Miss Erica Carter, who is a shouter in training. Carla's niece, Brenton's cousin, my daughter, and our last but not least of the shouters, Carlita's granddaughter. Woo! Carlita Sullivan is Brenton and Erica's grandmother, Carla's mother, and also my mother. My name is Vanessa Carter, I'm your narrator, and we are the authentic McIntosh County Challenge. 
it but never duplicate it. Needless to say, education was forbidden on the plantations. It was necessary to keep the slaves illiterate. But we always managed to make a way out of no way, and many slaves learned to read and write. Finally, good news. But who could believe what they were hearing after all they'd been through? Here was a letter telling them that they were free, but they didn't believe it because they couldn't read. In this song, they're asking John to read the letter, and this is the way it went. Read them, John. John brought the letter, lay them on the table, take all the members, read them all. Let me go. Oh, read them, John. Read them, tell you. Yeah, but... 